Well, it's March 17th, 2020. Happy St. Patrick's Day. You're all at home because we can't go out because the coronavirus, COVID-19, is upon us and most of us are stuck at home or stuck somewhere. And so are our kids. But because of the kind people at Zoom meetings, all teachers get free, unlimited use accounts. We're going to show you how to do it, how to get it set up, and we're going to show you how to use the tool. It's a great tool for remote learning, remote meetings, and it's a great way for our kids to stay in touch with all of their classmates. Up to 49 video windows can be on the screen at any given time, controlled by the teacher, and you can share information and do broadcasts and webinars and all kinds of great things and bring live classroom instruction to all of the kids that are cooped up at home and make it as normal as possible. I applaud all of you educators that are out there doing this. Thank you for your hard work. I hope this helps. So our agenda today is first, why? Why this particular product? Some basics, meeting versus webinar, big difference, <coughs> recording, editing, publishing, and anything else you want. Okay? That's why. I have used software as a business practice for most of my life and recommended software. I started my career at 19 at <coughs> IBM and I've been a geek ever since. This product works better. And I'll tell you the interesting thing about Zoom is the, the founder, Eric Wan, was one of the developers at uh, WebEx and he couldn't get them to move in the direction he wanted to go. So he left and started his own company. Pretty cool, huh? He's done quite well. And it also works to do remote learning because that's my daughter's math score from yesterday. Yay. I mean, this is working and I really applaud all of you. Thank you so much. All right, Zoom basics. So we're gonna talk about creating an event. We talk about how it integrates with Google Calendar. I'm gonna show you a really cool little trick. How many of you use Google Calendar? I'm assuming most in the schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, personal meeting ID versus an actual created event. This is a little sticky thing. When Amy tweeted this out yesterday, I got a little bit nervous because she just broadcast my personal meeting ID to the world, which I will change at the end of this meeting. <laughs> I didn't even think about it, I'm sorry. Uh, and then we'll talk about some of the settings, how to share screens and devices. Wait, you can share an iPad screen and an iPhone screen? You bet you can. And what equipment is needed both for just the general use and also if you wanted to build Zoom rooms in the school, meaning I have a TV on my wall here, 55 inch 4K TV. I could put a MacBook behind it or any device. This, I could use my iMac if I wanted and set that up with an iPad where you can walk in and join, create, start and manage Zoom meetings for multiple users in one room. As I told you earlier, it doesn't work great when you've got two computers running Zoom in the same room, there's feedback. This is designed for multiple people in the same room and there's relatively inexpensive cameras that will track and follow whoever's speaking so that it directs its attention to the appropriate audience. Could be great for meetings, board meetings, whatever. Very inexpensive also, and we probably have most of the equipment. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start out with uh, creating an event. So let's open up Zoom. Yes, I'm a bit organized. And everybody can see everything okay? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. So I'm currently running, this is a big one. I'm gonna share this with you. I'm currently running a 5K iMac, an iMac Pro, but I'm not running it in 5K. I'm not running it in 4K. I'm not running it in 3K. I'm running it in 2K, 2560 by 1440 resolution. What is he talking about? Okay, most of the devices that you have, because we have budgets in our schools, this is a good thing, are going to use maximum resolution and everything's gonna be great. So you'll wanna turn your resolution up. If you're a power user and you have a crazy MacBook Pro or an iMac Pro or one of the new $65,000 Mac Pros, anybody have one of those? I hope not, <laughs> I wanna get one really, really bad. So if you, if you have one of those, if you have a better one and the resolution's too high, people are looking like this, that's why. I don't think you'll have that problem. And I'll demonstrate 
by switching to 4K for you right now. See the difference? Did it get smaller? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I can get more on my screen, which is great for me to work, but it doesn't make it great for a presentation audience, so I'm gonna switch back to 2K. And here it comes, ready? There you go, better? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are times where you're gonna wanna have to take a look at that. All right, let's schedule a meeting. There's several ways to do this. Linda, who scheduled this initially, scheduled this meeting by going to my drift bot. What's a drift bot? Doesn't matter, it's not important. But there are mechanisms that can tie Zoom into a meeting. So she went and she booked a meeting by clicking on one of these, or what I gave her was dot partners, little automation there. And she went to my drift bot and went through the process of, I added educator yesterday. She gave me a description and eventually it asked her for my calendar or asked me, gave her my calendar. She chose the meeting and the software that I'm using, like many other pieces of software, automatically added the Zoom session in the background. That's one way. So if we use Calendly or Acuity or any of those other pieces of software, they might have Zoom integrations that will add the Zoom meeting automatically as the location for the meeting. And locations for meetings are different as of today. So that's gonna be very popular, I'm guessing. The other way to do it is to go into Zoom and create, schedule a new meeting. And I think I'm gonna kill a few birds here with uh, this particular <coughs> phone. And I'm going to share with you uh, what I see here. Now, for one, you'll notice that by default, it's choosing generate automatically versus personal meeting ID. My personal meeting ID is something that I set up and I can drop to people quickly. But if I give that to people, people can actually join my meeting without me necessarily wanting them to. How do I alleviate that? Well, the first thing is I can use a one-time password for this meeting, which I give to the people that I want to have access, or I can put them in the waiting room like you were. I set the settings to put you in the waiting room so that I could see your name and approve you before allowing you to come in. If right now, our president tried to join this meeting, I would have the option of not admitting him or admitting him. I'd want to know who it is first. Also not perfect. So what do we do instead? The best way is to just leave it with generate automatically and it'll create a unique meeting ID for that one time use. And once you end that meeting, that meeting is dead. People can't rejoin it. If you remove somebody from that meeting or webinar, they, well, I'm not sure about webinar. Meetings, I know. If you remove them from an active meeting, they can't come back on that session. You'll have to stop and start over with a new one. So keep that in mind. Okay, so you create your meeting, you create your time. You can, now this is a good one. I always have both video off. I don't want to embarrass people. I gave you the option to be seen, Patrice, and thank you for accepting it. And that your setting behind you is beautiful. Everybody says, this is such a great view. Okay, so video we want to leave off. She said, I'm back. <laughs> the audio, we want to choose both because we want to give everybody the option of being able to dial in if for some reason their audio isn't connecting. Both means either just connect on my computer and use the tools that I've got right here. You may share it to anybody you want and you may speak at any time as well. You don't have to use chat. Thank you. Um, and, and partly that's important because I want to hear some dialogue because that's what you're going to experience when you're using this with 20 children or 25 children, or 40, depending upon what district joins. So audio, both because they can dial up on the phone if they're having trouble and still see the screen here. Mm -hmm. And if that's not, and, and the better way is they're just gonna click and join and they won't even know it. If they're a Mac user, it'll be very simple, okay? Meeting options and enable join before host, sure. I'm not gonna show up on time once in a while, but I want you to sit there and wait for me if it has to be two minutes, that's fine. Mute participants, yes, out of respect. Enable waiting room. You all saw the waiting room when you came in. That allows me to choose to allow you access. 
I can make it more interesting. I can record the meeting automatically and I can add an alternative host as well who have more power and control over the, the uh, uh, session. Okay, so that's a way to create a meeting. Well, why don't we take this opportunity right now and discuss the difference between a meeting and a webinar. And the biggest thing is one to many versus versus uh, one to one, so to speak. So in this case, it's really more of a group discussion with a meeting. People can join, you can literally get 49 windows up here. You can see every single kid in your class, what they're fiddling with and doing. If they're not paying attention, you can touch their face, nothing will happen, but it'll look funny. Mm -hmm. And you can just kind of engage with them in that way. I can all see that you're very attentive. And that's key, right? In an environment where you're, where you're educating children. I mean, my goodness. And that's why meetings is going to be your preferred method in some cases. But then there's going to be other times where you're just going to want to dump information on them and, not, and you can shut off their video and so they can only see you and not their friends. And that's fine in meeting. I think you'll use meeting all the time, but test both of them and you'll see the differences. Webinar gives you the ability to do Q&A, and you can actually do polls, or what I think you call quizzes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe there's testing integrations to be added to this, and don't worry, you don't have to research it, because I'm gonna get that answer for you. I'm working on this a lot to help the entire nation. I want everybody to learn how to use this tool, because we might be here a while, and this might not be the last time we're gonna be here. So webinar is similar thing. You create your webinar, you can create recurring ones, but they're really more for just broadcasting yourself, sharing some content, allowing other people to view, raise their hands, ask, ask questions. Do you have hand raising in meeting? Yeah. You, not, not this type. I mean, do you see it? Oh. <laughs> Well, see, that's probably why in meeting you don't need it because you can raise your hand. Yeah, we raise hands. <laughs> I don't. So in webinar, you can raise your hand, which means, "Hi, I'm I'm Audrey, and I need to ask a question." And as soon as I get to you, I see your hand. It's kind of like the the light on a for the flight attendant. Uh. Okay, you can create webinar templates and all that. You'll figure this part out. And if you need my help, you know where to reach me. Google Calendar integration. Let me do that first before I go to before I go uh, into recordings. All right, so this is really kind of cool. So on Google Calendar, you can open it up. You're gonna see my appointments, okay? And here is a meeting. None of these are meetings, so I'll create one. And a test meeting. And then I can open that meeting, edit it, and I can make it a Zoom meeting just by clicking that button. Now, that's the reverse of going to Zoom, creating a meeting, and then picking your calendar, right? This is more efficient because you pick the time. How do you get this to work? You simply add the Zoom extension in Chrome, which is right here. And I will click on it and I will manage it and you will see I can find open extension website so i will post this in chat right now and you may click on it and i'll put that down in the notes wherever i post this later you can click on it and add that to your chrome and that will allow you to log into a zoom account after you've created it and that'll allow you to uh, add the meetings as I just showed. Okay, so that's cool. Let's go back to where we are, Google Calendar. So personal meeting ID versus, you understand that, settings. Now there's so many settings. Uh, I'm gonna touch on some of them, but I'm gonna ask you first, can you see that? Do you yes. see my settings? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so right here under video, you can see this right here. I'm sorry, it's under share screen. You can say, show Zoom windows. Can you see it now? Mm -hmm. You still see it? Must be, a, must be a thing. Must have to restart it, but you shouldn't be able to because I unchecked it. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, if you start a meeting with that unchecked, this type of stuff, you could be playing with your settings and nobody will know. 
Okay, so I want to demo Zoom, and that's why they enabled this feature. I think I requested it. Okay, so let's go through them real quick. Dual monitors, don't bother. It's confusing, difficult, more than we need, leave it be. I've got four monitors, I'll never do it. Enter full screen when starting or joining a meeting, which all of you probably did. I turn it off, and I'll show you why when we get to video, where it says, maybe not, to share screen, where it says maximize. Mm. So general, I don't know why they're in different places. Enter full screen sometimes gets people lost, so I turn it off. This one's my favorite. It doesn't come default uh, chosen. Automatically copy the invitation URL when, once the meeting starts. So if you go to the Zoom software on your, on your Mac or your PC or even your mobile device, in this case Mac or PC, and you create, click on new meeting. Let me see if I'm able to show you that. Do you see that? Yes. See my, you can see my, my 11.25 a.m. calendar? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the actual Zoom application that is on the Mac. And when I click here to create a new meeting, obviously I'm in a meeting, so the button's different. But when I click back to meeting, which would say new meeting, it would create the new meeting for me on the fly and copy the URL that I need to give to my mother in Slack. Doesn't that sound cool, my mom in Slack? I gotta get my mom in Slack. Let's say, or email it, or whatever it might be, so that you instantly have that URL in your clipboard so you can paste it wherever you want it. Maybe it's on Facebook, maybe it's in Google Classroom, maybe it's in whatever other messaging you use, okay? And naturally, today is the day that they're going to blow my front yard. Can you hear that? <laughs> okay, can you still hear me okay? Yes. All right. Um, ask me to confirm when I leave a meeting, always turn it on because if you ever click leave a meeting and you didn't mean to and it was a mistake, you're gone. So make sure you keep it on. Show my meeting duration. I just think that's cool. I like to see how, we've been on for 28 minutes and 41 seconds. I, I like to know that. Uh, add Zoom to my Mac OS menu bar. Nah, eh, too much. Uh, other settings that are important to you, you can play with. Your skin tone is very important. If you've ever noticed, you can change your skin tone. Not everybody has a yellow hand. Okay. Enjoy that. Okay. So with video, I have a 4K Logitech Brio camera, but I could switch to my FaceTime built in. So if you have more than one, you can switch it there. But you can also switch it. Now this I won't be able to, sh well, wait a minute. Yes, I can. You see that, right? You see yourselves? Mm -hmm. This is the other place that I'm able to change that. And that's right here. And here. See the little arrows next to it? Mm -hmm. That's where you change your video to a different camera. Or if your mic's not working because you plugged in a mic in the middle of your session, you switch it here. You see, I have a lot of different options. So you wanna make sure you set them. Now, Zoom will override your system if you wish. So if I wanna always use the Yeti X, which I should, can you still hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is my Yeti microphone here and the speaker's at the side of my desk, but I can change that and that's how. Here, on the fly, or here, in the settings. Okay, real quick, 16 by nine always. We don't live in a four by three world anymore. Enable HD, you might wanna turn it off. Uh, mirror my video, turn it on because then it'll look real. Touch up my appearance, I'm actually 10 years older than I look because <laughs> of that feature. <laughs> cool. Uh, and then the rest of these you can, you can have some fun with. Display up to 49 per participants per screen in gallery view. Now, gallery view versus speaker view is, doop. Oh. You made a noise, so you showed up first. Somebody else make a noise. Boop. See? Hi. <laughs> gallery view is everybody. Speaker view is the active speaker. Okay? That's full screen, not full screen. It's the devil. Oh, we have somebody else. Okay, uh, let's see, we've got, 
audio. We did with share screen. Okay, so share screen again. Enter full screen when a participant shares. I turn it off. The word full screen and I don't get along. Maximize screen, I do. And in, if you're a Mac user, you can change in your uh, Mac doc what happens when you double click the bar up here, whether it maximizes or goes full. I set mine to maximize so that I don't have to hunt for that little green dot to, to get it back and create a space. Scale to fit is great. Show zoom windows, yes. Side by side mode, no, it's confusing and, and I don't understand it. Uh, and of course, silence your system notifications. That's really handy. You don't need people to hear the beeps and the clicks on your, on your setup. Chat, I'm not a big believer. I don't use it. I only use it in meetings. So they believe that it's going to replace Slack. I don't. So use it in your meetings or however you wish. Virtual background. Yes, you can be in Hawaii when you meet with <laughs> kids. I would do it once in a while. Uh, recording. There's two ways to record with Zoom. I don't know what they're going to allow you. I would recommend you record locally unless you have a very slow computer, then you can record in the cloud. Locally is going to always look better. Locally meaning it puts a file on your desktop. In the cloud means they record it up and hold it in the cloud and you can download it later. Again, locally meaning your computer's recording as you go. In the cloud meetings, their computers and the servers are recording for you. You can download it later, edit it, publish it, do whatever you want. And I think that's good. Um, if, you see, <clears throat> if you see the internet bars go yellow or red, you can check your statistics. Usually just pause for a moment and it'll come back because the internet flows in waves. Patrice, you had a bit of an internet problem there for a couple seconds, but now you're perfect again. We all have them. We're all going to have them. Even with gigabit, ether, uh, gigabit internet like I have, I still get hiccups. So just be patient. But you can look in statistics to see where you are, and you can see I'm well under the thresholds. Okay. There are more settings online. When you click that, it'll open up Zoom on the web and really go into granular breakdown and different things. It's not something I'm going to cover today. You, most of you will never use it, but it is a very, very powerful tool. So if there's something you're not seeing or a setting that you'd like to try, that's where you'll find it. Okay. <clears throat> sharing screens and devices. So I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. And I'm going to share. Actually, I need to stay shared, don't I? Okay, well, let me show you. Okay, let me show you what it looks like from my side. Now, again, we have this drop up and it's, pro there it is. Okay, so this, can you see my various share options? Okay, I'll just explain them to you. So on my desk, I have an iPhone and now it's connected onto a mount. So now I can use the cable versus AirPlay. Okay. Whiteboards that are connected. Desktops. I have four desktops. So I can share any of the desktops that I wish. If I want to share my calendar, I can share that. If I want to share uh, my, my chat sessions, I can do that. And if I want to share the main desktop here, or the fourth desktop, which is up above, which is Sonos and Microsoft Remote Desktop. I can share a specific app that's open only. Now be careful with this, because you will tend to get caught. I'm gonna move you all up here so I can see you. See the value of having that extra display up there? You can get it for like 99 bucks today. So if you share just the app, it's good if you want focus, but you're going to have to unshare or stop sharing and reshare if you switch. So I have Google Chrome open. If I share this, all, I'm going to, all you're going to see is Chrome. You see it? Mm -hmm. But if I share, if I stop the share and I share again by clicking the green button and I choose the whole desktop, then I can switch my apps dynamically in front of you. It's the whole thing, okay? Usually we share the desktop. Now, something 
wildly popular, particularly I think in this, this particular industry, uh, education is sharing an iPad or an iPhone. I do it a lot for training, but for you, you may have made your presentation on iPad and you just don't want to open up the MacBook and do it there, or maybe it's an app you don't have on the MacBook. All you have to do is plug it in or AirPlay connect it to your MacBook, and you can literally share what's on your iPhone. So let's do that. So I am now sharing my iPhone. Hmm. Neat, huh? Now there's also a Zoom here. There's also a Zoom here. Should have probably been ready for that. Well, I'll search for it. Zoom. There it is. So I can launch Zoom from my iPhone. You really can sit in your chair and have a meeting with the kids on your iPhone. I wouldn't, but if you're in a pinch, it works well. Okay, so that's sharing. I'm gonna have plenty of time for questions, so don't worry. Uh, let's share my desktop again. And everybody see that okay? Okay, another tip, what I just did, it's okay to do, and it's important to do because nothing is worse than doing a whole presentation and forgetting to record or forgetting to share. I have had people go 30 minutes before they would say to me, what are you talking about? Wait a minute, the last 30 minutes that I just gave you that whole demo, you didn't see any of that? Don't you think you should have said something? People will not. They're afraid to. Just like when I was in school, I was scared to death to raise my hand. People, some people are more comfortable with the webcam and some people are less. So always, not always, but periodically, check. Everybody see that okay? Can you hear me okay? We yeah. good? I'm recording. Check. Move on. Maybe make a checklist. Maybe I'll make a checklist and send it to you of the things you want to do. And if we were to go back to where we began, it would be something like our event primer. And you might wanna ask questions, can everybody hear me okay? You can just do it right here. Make an event primer, in fact, let's do it together. So I'll edit this. Can you hear me okay? And I messed that up, so I'll move it back. Can you hear me okay? Can you see my screen? And so on. So you can have a list of questions that are good for you to remember and for them. And you might want to put the event primer or one of these as a slide if you're doing slides, just to remind you to say it one more time. Or what I like to do is I have little icons or emoticons that I'll put in the corners. And those little emoticons will remind me, this is a demo or, hey, you should ask a polling question or whatever it might be. Great little reminders. Build a little system, maybe a, the only piece of paper allowed on my desk, a key. These are all of my clients and they're rocket book check marks. We can talk about that offline, what that is. It's the coolest device ever. But I can take a picture of my notes and it automatically goes right into their client folder. Okay, so we were at, We've talked about meetings, we talked about webinars, we, we haven't really talked about recording other than the fact that you can do it locally or in the cloud, but really just turn it on. Start your recording or, or set it up so that your meetings and your webinars are automatically recorded because there's gonna be some nuggets in everything you do that are gonna be absolutely fabulous and you're gonna wanna reuse them. And what a great tool to be able, all of my webinars that I've done over the last seven years on schoolofbookkeeping.com and on 74systems.com are webinars that I recorded, put bumpers in front of with music and openings, my son playing the guitar, it's really cool. And then I publish those and there's a ton of them on using Zoom, ironically. So you can repurpose that content for other kids, for yourself, whatever, whatever purpose. Okay, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on editing because I know that there are limits to this. I'm gonna tell you straight up though, you don't have to edit much, but if you want to, it's relatively simple to do. Do you want to see a little bit of quick editing? Raise a hand if you're interested. Okay, real quick. All right, 
So I'm going to show you my favorite tool. You can use iMovie if you want. I love Camtasia. Camtasia is a relatively inexpensive product. It's super easy. It, the tracks are one could be the audio and one could be the video. When Zoom records, it's going to record audio and video over your screen share and you can literally separate them. You'll be able to split audio and video so that you can, for example, if you don't want them to see that part of the presentation and you just want to overlay an image, you can. And it's as simple as grabbing something from, let's go to, let's see what we got here. Let's go to raw and see, I don't have anything from there. This is just, okay, here we go. So a little hockey footage for you, naturally, story of my life. So this is a video that I just grabbed off of my finder and dragged in. I can right click here, separate video and audio. <laughs> That's it. And if I want to play a silent movie, I'll delete the audio, but I don't. Command Z. Okay, so let's say I really don't need that part. So I'm going to highlight both of them and drag it all the way to here. I just cut that out. Now I'll move these back to the beginning, start over, and it starts here instead. That's it. That is uh, a coach with a hero on his head <laughs> camera. So you can overlay images. You can do a variety of things. Camtasia, iMovie. You use iMovie, I'm assuming. Same concept. But you can grab your Zoom recording, drag and drop it in here, edit out the beginning and the end. That's usually what you're going to edit because you're talking with friends and, and until it gets started. So you want to start when you say, good morning. My Merrick Greenspan, yada, 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 yada. So whatever that period is, you're going to want to cut up to that point. And then at the end, you're going to want to cut. And then if you're like me, you'll add bumpers, which look a little like this. This is a different company, but you'll get the point. This is my son. <coughs> Simple. I've just put a little logo on the screen and this is what it looks like. I can make this a little bigger and it has an animation of the logo going out and the audio track underneath with a little fade out and that's it. I made it, I grouped it, I saved it in the library and I reuse it over and over and over. I've got a ton of them. This is 74 systems, so if I didn't want to do a school of bookkeeping, I would use this instead. A little jumpy because of the bandwidth we're using. So this one looks like this. Again, my son, Jacob Greenspan. Okay, so that's the editing. Then I'm gonna save that by exporting it to an MP4, or if it's audio only, audio only, and upload it to Vimeo or YouTube or whatever it is you use for hosting videos. So Mrs. Thorpe, I'm going to make an example out of you right now. You <laughs> sent us a video yesterday in Parent Square. I've yet to be able to uh, watch that video on Parent Square. I was able to download it, and watch it but when I'm on my iPhone parent square I have to log in and go back and find it and then view it and go in I would have rather just had a link to where that video is stored online okay. I don't know that it's I don't know what school policy is but if we used a hidden or unlisted YouTube post which you'd have to have the link to access otherwise it would never be found that's one way and that's free Vimeo is an account that I use that I pay for and I can restrict who has access or what websites it can be on. So if you went to School of Bookkeeping and you looked at any one of our courses, you would see 
that all of the videos that are here are actually just links. So let's go to, where's that really cool one? QuickBooks payment. So this one's brand new. So each one of the videos that are in these lessons, and yes, I can show you how to do this. I have to log in. But trust me that there's a video here, and that video is stored somewhere else and just placed here mm -hmm. so that it's viewable here, but it's not really here. Mm -hmm. But it gives people instant access in an unprotected world like mine is protected because you have to pay to view it. Okay, let's go back and see. So that's editing. And then publishing is what I'm talking about now. Vimeo, YouTube unlisted, and then just have a link. You can, I think we can do that. Or perhaps there's a video library uh, solution through Google Classroom. And then you can place the link into ParentSquare. I can click on it and get to the video right away. That'd be more efficient. <laughs> okay. Anything? Go for it. This is your chance. Just go. There's only, there's only five of six of us here or five of you here. So fire away. I have a question. I had a parent yesterday after I did a zoom meeting, if there's a way to have the kids like do partner activities. Cause like we were saying yesterday, they were so excited just to see each other and to see me. Um, but then one of the parents was like, how do we connect? Can we connect kids to kids or how, how is there? No, let, me, let me answer that really simple. First of all, you can only take advantage. Am I still sharing? Your yeah. screen, yeah. Yeah, I am, of course I am. So in my post, step one is to create a basic account. Step two is to go and fill out that form. I'll put this in the chat and I'll email it, make sure everybody has it. So I wrote this post to make it easier to understand what Zoom's doing. So you'll click on this first one and you'll go and create an account using your school's email address. If you use a Gmail or a Hotmail or whatever, forget about it. You'll, you'll still get 40 minute time limit with 100 participants though, if you're not an educator. Educators, they've waived that through this crisis. That's the beauty. So the step two is you'll go fill out the form and ask them to waive that off of your account so that you won't get shut off after 40 minutes. Now. If you get shut off after 40 minutes waiting and you don't want to wait, that's okay. Start another session and do another 40 minutes. But your educators, use your proper email address, go get your free accounts. All of you get them. To address your question, the kids get 40 minutes. Then they can reconnect. It's free. Okay. Tell them how to do it. Send yeah. them to this page. All they have to do is sign up for an account and off they go. And their parents should have an account too. When this is done, I'll have a link for you to send this to their parents and you can educate them on what they need to do to get their kids using Zoom or something else. My daughter used uh, FaceTime, right? FaceTime yesterday and they did all kinds of work. And I don't know if you know it or not, but FaceTime works on the computer and you can share your screen. It's nowhere near as slick as Zoom is, but it gets the job done. Great. Thank you. Yes, Mrs. Thorpe. <laughs> um <laughs> Can you talk more about how to use the chat feature in Zoom? Sure. So there's chat just in general in Zoom, whether you're connected to a meeting or not. Like I've been chatting with the CEO of Zoom, Eric Wan, who's a really cool guy. And he's been the one who's behind this. Uh, he's always been very supportive in the past. And that's how I got to know him early because I was an early user. But what chat's really going to benefit you is using chat while the kids are in a meeting mm -hmm. and you can see it here yes mm -hmm. yeah. okay so this is the key uh -huh. I can talk behind the rest of your backs with just me and mrs. Thorpe or I can talk to all of you in webinar you have more controls you can speak to panelists which have a little more power you can speak to other hosts you can speak to everybody most of the time you're going to want to speak to everyone, but if Audrey is not acting properly, Mrs. Edwards, you are welcome to find her name in the list and say, Audrey, knock it off without embarrassing her in front of the rest of the class. I got a lot of smiles on that one. <laughs> yeah, I'll use that feature a lot. Does that make sense? So, and chat can be used to put links so that they can jump to websites. You don't want to say, hey, kids, go to Google and do this and 
click the waffle and go there and all these things that you tell them. It's so cute. I, I said, waffle? Who calls that a waffle? <laughs> uh, but that was really cute. And, and by the way, I just want to say thank you because it was pretty awesome how the two of them, I have a fourth grader and a sixth grader and their teachers are here. Thank you. And they sat up on the counter. I was rushed. I had to get to a client who's very understanding, obviously. And they logged into their Google Classroom by themselves, got everything going, showed me what they were doing and how they were doing it. And they're nailing their homework. Audrey's got 100% on her math uh, homework. I mean, it's, it's working. The only part that's missing, I think, is, and it's going to get worse over time, is this engagement. And I'm going to tell you something. This will be the highlight of my day, other than being with my family. I get to talk to one person at a time, generally. Six people is a heck of a lot more fun. And the next time I do this, it'll probably be 50 people and then a thousand. So I've had meetings like this where there's been a lot of people on it and people tend to, to manage themselves very well. I have no idea what's going to happen with a class of 20 children, but I'm guessing because you have the power to mute all, then you can. <laughs> Which is new. I know. You know. I never had that power before. Yeah, right? See? Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, this is the future for a lot of reasons. Whether, whether they're in class or not, this is, you should just put a computer at their desk and use Zoom. I've often told people that I would rather work in a, the same office on Zoom computers sharing than having people in my office face-to-face -face sometimes because I can't share the application or the tool that I'm using in the same way. It's great if I can draw on the whiteboard or I'm just having a conversation or if it's obviously social, but in a business or a education environment, the tools are sharing right in front of us and you can annotate. Oh, by the way, let's try annotating real quick. Mm -hmm. Can't do that here, can you? Okay, so there is polling in meetings. Oh, yeah. Annotating is obviously a webinar thing. So if you, if for some reason, I don't see it. Oh. Okay. Um, so I think it's just a webinar, but it allows you to draw on the screen and do stuff and highlight things. I want to say one more thing before you ask another question or we, we stop. I know people out there that don't have access to the equipment and the tools that they need. And yet, ironically, it seems that no matter where we are in our lives, income levels, there tends to be phones and TVs in pretty much most of the homes. You don't need fancy, you don't need expensive, any mobile device, any computer with a webcam can work. It doesn't have to have a webcam. As long as you can see the screen and what the teacher is presenting, you don't have to present back for, as, a, as a child. Nobody should be excluded from this. I don't know if you know this or not, but Cox Communications now has a, uh, a very inexpensive, and I, I believe of even a free program, so that anybody during this crisis can get internet connectivity that didn't have it before. If you ever run into a situation in this community where you have a child that cannot take advantage of this, reach out to me and I will connect it to the right people and we will make sure that that child is not excluded. This community cannot not be able to take advantage of these tools. I don't care what school you're going to. Any other questions? Thank you. So uh, could I just say from your email that you've sent us, it's going to be possible for me to set up a Zoom classroom where I can do this with my class. Is that All right? you need to do, my dear Mrs. Edwards. Thank you. You can see this, right? Yes. I want you, let me get you out of the way from the back so I can put you back here. Okay, now I can see you and this at the same time. Again, why I have to. Uh, by the way, for those of you that have a MacBook on Catalina, raise your hand if you have a tablet, an iPad, or an iPhone. You can connect it and make it a secondary monitor for free now. You know about this, right? You don't. How do you not know about this? <laughs> <clears throat> Sidecar. Update to Catalina. Plug in your iPhone. Make sure your iPhone or iPad are up to date. Click on Sidecar, and you can connect that to be a secondary monitor, just like any other monitor, so that you can maybe have the kids over here and your workspace over here. 
That was a nugget. Got lots of head shaking there. Excellent. Um, any other questions? And feel free. I'm not, I'm I'm good for a bit. Okay. So I will get this recording shortly. I will edit it. I will put my bumpers on it. I will publish it and I will share it to you. And you will have my email address, which is eric at 74systems.com or go to 74systems.com. Click on, here, I'll actually show you in real life. Go to 74systems.com. We're going to get to him, but on a different screen. And you don't have to do anything, but if you see this little guy, 74D2, mm -hmm. speak to a human. And if I'm available, I'll come running mm. in chat. Wow. Okay. Did you have another question? We good? That's good. really cool. Linda, I'll explain yeah. offline. Thank you. You're welcome. And I, oh, okay. Sorry. I have to answer her question. Go to this page, do step one, create your Zoom account. Go to step two which is on the same page, or hopefully, maybe open both of them. Click command, click, command, click on each one of them so that they both open. Command, click, command, click. There they are, there's one, there's two. I, mine goes automatically because I'm logged in. This is the verification form after you create your free account. You fill in your information, make sure you're using your school email address, gotta have that school name in it, edu or whatever, no Gmail, no nonsense. They don't want people taking advantage. Wait, I don't know how long it takes. Your 40 minute gets removed, but you don't have to wait because who wants to listen to kids for more than 40 minutes at a time anyhow? You can start right now and then when they wave it, then you can go longer if need be. Start taking advantage of it and all you have to do is go to your account, create a meeting, go to your calendar, create a meeting, whatever it is, and send the invite out to your kids or put it in Google Classroom and tell them to connect. I recommend that everybody figure out how to do this, test it, and then go build some curriculum so that you have a schedule for the kids so they know at 10 o'clock, they have a live meeting with their teacher. Please, please. And let me know what the schedule is because I'll book all my meetings to be concurrent with yours so that my kids are out of my hair for that time. <laughs> Everybody will appreciate this, and I think your audience is going to be rewarded and phenomenal as a result. Okay? Incredible. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for what you do. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, Eric.